In this video, we'll go from this to this, and we're gonna take an AI image and bring it to life. And this can be done with any AI image, so it doesn't matter where you create it. We'll just get the JPEG, so basically the static image, and turn it into life. You can, of course, download the free assets down below in the description. And in this video, I will show you how to create the AI image, how to separate all the elements, and also how to animate it. Let's jump into it. We'll start in Discord, because I'm gonna use Mid Journey. There are a lot of AI uh, image generators. You can also use Firefly, which is free by Adobe. Not sponsored, but there's tons of options nowadays. But Mid Journey is really cool. I've been trying it out. And for example, I have soldiers overlooking a cyberpunk world, realistic. And this is really important, guys. AR, so that's aspect ratio 16 by 9. So you have the right aspect ratio. And then what's also important after you, you're you happy with the end result, I really like the bottom right because I think we can do something, some things with that. But if you check the image, then make sure that you also separate it by pressing U4. Uh, so in this case, this is number four. And then also I'm going to use the upscale function to make it high res. And then you get this and I'm really happy with this. I think it looks so cool with the soldiers overlooking the city. So I'm going to download this and we'll go into Photoshop. So we have the image and now we need to think of what we want to separate, what which things do we want in the image or which things we don't. First, I think it's really cool to separate the foreground element. So basically this whole pile of mess and the three soldiers also separating them. And there's multiple ways to do this. You can use the quick selection tool, which is under here. Magic wand tool, you can also try. Or the object selection tool. It really depends on how good it is with the object selection. You can also change the object selection tool to lasso and let's see if we can do something with this i'm just gonna go around the objects like this see if it recognizes them it's a rough sketch something like this making sure that you select the bottom two and the sides two i did it pretty well just here on the left and this uh, needs to be added but we can do that we'll just mask it for now that's great i'm gonna duplicate the layer by pressing ctrl j or a command j let's delete the layer mask of the bottom one and then let's go to the top one and what i'll do is i'll just go to the bottom layer and i'm gonna change the opacity a bit so we know which parts are like basically not in our image select the mask go into the brush tool and then we'll make sure that this is on white so the foreground layer is on white we'll add these this far foreground layer now also i'm gonna zoom in and see if i can add this too because i think that's also important that we have the whole image let's increase the hardness by right clicking and then i'm just gonna add this a bit it doesn't have to be perfect guys because when we're animating this you won't look into these small details but you can really dive deep and really separate the objects if you want to i'm gonna zoom out and this looks really great so we're gonna select this select the bottom layer we'll first press delete so we're gonna delete it i'm gonna turn the top layer off so you'll see what's happening so we basically deleted the whole bottom now if we go back to the selection tool we right click and you can choose two fill modes and we can just try which one works better. Content aware fill or generated fill. Content aware fill works better with basic shapes, basic objects, and the generated fill uses AI. So it will fill up whatever things it is and it will be more creative, I would say. I'm just gonna use the generated fill and see what's gonna happen. Do make sure that your opacity is back to 100% because otherwise it won't work. And as you can see, you see this edge line. And before we proceed, we need to fix that. So I'm just gonna cancel the fill, go into our selection mode, go to select, modify, and go to expand. I'm just gonna expand it by maybe one pixel. I think that should be enough. And I'm also showing you this so you know what's happening. And as you can see, those edges are gone. I can even zoom in, see if we really got it gone. I'm really happy with this. So I'm gonna just press okay. I'm gonna deselect it by pressing command D or control D on Windows. And then what happened is if we turn the top layer off, you just have a background, which is amazing and exactly the effect that we want. So we can call this front. We can combine these layers by right clicking and pressing merge layers. And also I'm gonna right click on this, convert to smart object, right click and rasterize layer. So I have one front layer and one back layer. For the last bit, we can even remove some elements and add them back in later if we want to. For example, this smoke, but I'm just gonna see if this works without it. So let's save this as a PSD, so a Photoshop file, and let's now jump into After Effects. 
We're here in After Effects. I'm gonna import it by just opening it. Make sure that it's still editable and also the composition is set to composition, okay? And then we can just open it and we'll see our image. And this is amazing. It's in the right aspect ratio. We can turn the front layer off and we have a back layer, which is also great. Now I wanna make sure that this is in the right composition. I created a composition in 4K, so it's a right size. We can just copy this over by pressing Control C on the, on the windows, making sure that the front layer is above the back layer and that these are in the middle. We do that by going to the Align tool and centering it. Right click, Transform, Fit to Comp, and there we go. Amazing. First thing that I'm gonna do is make them 3D and I'm gonna add a new camera. Now you have two types of cameras, a two node and a one node camera. One node camera is basically, it can just move around and a two node camera, it can move around to a certain point. For this certain effect, a one node camera is fine and it makes it way easier. Now we can even check uh, the preset button and I'm gonna probably use 80 millimeter, maybe 50 millimeter. I think 50 millimeter is always nice. Press okay. And the first thing we need to do is separate these layers. So basically making sure that there's some depth to the layer. So this is gonna be your front layer. This is gonna be the back layer. And if you now move, you see there's the parallax. In the real life, that's true. And in After Effects, it's true too. So we press P on the front layer and I'm gonna move it more to the front, something like this. And if you want to see what's happening, you can even change the uh, camera view, for example, to custom view one, and then you can see these layers. And as you can see, there's some depth to it. I'm gonna change this back to the active camera. I'm gonna scale it back by pressing S for scale, something like this, making sure it fills the whole image. Now, what happens if I press the camera and press P, and I'm gonna adjust the front layer, you'll see there's depth to this image, which looks so cool. I think it really brings this image alive. And it just makes me so happy to see these effects. So we could, for example, use the position and go a bit further, maybe to five seconds and then zoom it in quite far. Not only that, I can also change the uh, position to the left or the second value to go make it more to the top. And let's see what happens now. That looks amazing. Now this already brings this image alive, but I'm gonna add some elements. I want to add some smoke and I also want to add a lens flare. Let's start with the lens flare. I always like to use the basic features of After Effects and not external plugins. Don't get me wrong, I love plugins, but in this case, for example, a flare, lens flare, and then you can change the lens type. And unfortunately there's only three types. We can adjust the brightness, I think the 50 to 300 is the coolest effect. I'm just gonna put it somewhere here. Make sure that your solid is a black color, okay? Go to toggle switches modes and change the mode to screen. Now we have a flare. Now what's important is that I'm gonna uh, move the center on the sun. So I'm gonna put it around here and then I'm gonna keyframe the flare center. So we'll just go from here to the last frame and then make sure that there's some movement in this. What we can even do is press P for position, keyframe that, move it over, select our layer, select our lens flare, make sure that this position is right. I'm gonna press U to see all my keyframes and I'm just gonna preview this, see what it looks like. I think it's a cool effect. I think it's a bit too much. We can of course decrease the flare brightness or we can just press T for transparency and just turn down the layer a bit, not too much. And of course I can also adjust the uh, position so it's less noticeable. For example, maybe a bit in the middle, go back to our lens flare, making sure that that's on the right point. And then let's see what this looks like. And that adds some depth to the image. I have a variety of footage downloaded. And again, you can download these in the assets pack down below, it's free. And we can just click on the layer, change the blending mode to screen. Now, of course, we need to make this 3D too, so it sticks with the layers. Maybe align it a bit, maybe we'll add a glow to it. Just basically trying to make sure that it blends in a bit. Maybe it decrease the opacity a bit, so it's not as noticeable. For the smoke layer, it's exactly the same, except what we do now is uh, we go to screen again, but we need to make sure that this is also on the front. So we go to our front element, we press P, and I'm just gonna copy over this position value. And of course we need to scale it a bit. Maybe you can even mask it a bit how you like it. Maybe rotate it a bit on the Z axis. I think we can even move it a bit more to the front. So there's really depth to it and maybe decrease the opacity a bit. And then our black smoke, I want to use that on the top right layer. Now, this is also quite easy, except this is a green screen and we can just use the key light feature for this. 
Keylight is a really good built-in plugin by After Effects that we can just use for basically keying out any green screen. So we'll just click this and as you can see, it works really well. Maybe we have to deform it a bit. The best way to do this, in my opinion, is Mesh Warp. Mesh Warp just creates a grid. And as you can see, I think it's quite straight on the bottom, which I don't really like. So we can just move this out a bit, for example, and move the other points too. So it's basically a bit more like real smoke that it comes from one point and I decrease the opacity a bit and I'm just going to move it over, see what it looks like. And I think on top of this layer, it looks really cool. You do see the edge of the fog layer. And to get rid of that, I'll just use a pen tool and a mask like this. I'm going to go into my mask, invert it, press F for feather, feather it out, press save. And then you get something like this. As you can see, it's a really cool effect. You can use this on any AI image where there's some foregrounds and background layers. I'm looking forward to see what you guys make of it. If you made something, do post it in our free Discord community. Again, check the link in the description down below. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment of what you want to see next. And I'll see you next time. Bye.